There are a lot of videos on YouTube about why you should switch from Windows or macOS over to Linux, especially with the absolute state Microsoft is pushing Windows towards. While these videos are certainly helpful for understanding why you'd want to use Linux in the first place, I figured I'd give some advice on how to make the switch. Not in terms of installing the OS, but rather the things I feel that new users should know. So the first thing you should know is that Linux is not a standalone operating system. When you switch to Linux, the thing you actually install on your computer is a Linux distro. So what is a distro? Well, there are a bunch of things that make up an operating system, and in the case of Linux, a distro is basically a default selection of those things that work well together. However, most distros are standardised to some extent. For example, most distros use Grub for the bootloader. Now, a question most beginners ask is what distro should I use? It depends, but if I had to give a concrete answer, Linux Mint. Not because it's objectively the best or because it's my favourite, but having used it in the past, I can confidently say it's stable, easy to use, lightweight, and generally doesn't have compatibility issues. There's also Zorin OS if you want something that looks a bit more modern and polished, and both of these are based on Ubuntu. The second point kind of ties into the first point, and that is Linux is not Windows. Well, duh, obviously. What I mean by this is Linux doesn't function the same way Windows does. For instance, Windows uses the NTFS file system. Although Linux can read and write to NTFS drives, the main file systems would be things like ext4, butterfs, and xfs. If you don't know what any of this means, don't worry. However, I'd argue the most significant difference, and probably the one that really matters, is how software is installed on Linux, which is usually done through a package manager, rather than downloading a file from your browser. Most package managers are command line tools, however, many beginner friendly distros like Linux Mint and Zorin OS have a GUI program where you can install software, kind of like an app store. Speaking of software, the third thing you should consider is the software that you use. Not all programs run on Linux. Say something, I'm giving up on you. I know, heartbreaking. This includes popular tools like Adobe Creative Cloud and Microsoft Office. So if you absolutely need to run Windows in some capacity, then I suggest dual booting, which is where you run Windows and Linux on the same computer. You run Linux most of the time, and only run Windows when you need to. There are other solutions such as using Wine and running VMs, but they have their own problems. But if these programs are just nice to have rather than essential, then I would encourage you to look into software that does natively run on Linux, especially FOSS software because a lot of those programs are designed for Linux first and then ported to Windows and macOS later. In my case, I was using quite a lot of free software on Windows, so I didn't have to learn a whole new workflow. And in general, quite a lot of software is natively supported on Linux, and of course you also have web apps, which I don't really like, but they are a viable option and a lot of people are already using them, and since they run in the browser, the OS is sort of irrelevant. The fourth thing I would recommend is taking the fact you use Linux into consideration. For example, when you buy new hardware. I'm not talking about devices which are basically plug and play like a USB mouse or a basic pair of speakers. I'm talking about things like printers, where drivers can be finicky. If you're looking for a printer, I would recommend the Brother HL1210W. Besides running very well on Linux, it's just a great printer overall. Likewise, if you're building a PC and you're buying a Bluetooth adapter, Wi-Fi adapter, network card, look up how well they play with Linux. I should also clarify that if any hardware or software isn't supported on Linux, it's usually not the fault of Linux, but rather the fault of the company choosing not to support Linux, especially if it's proprietary. So you sort of need this mindset of, if they don't support Linux, I don't support them. You know, you wouldn't buy an iPhone case for your Android phone, and then complain that it doesn't fit. The fifth thing I would suggest is don't fear the terminal. Although the terminal might seem daunting at first, I'd encourage you to at least learn the basics of it, and the reason is because you may need to use the terminal for troubleshooting, and it's helpful to know the gist of the commands you're running. Plus, when you become good at the terminal, it's often faster to use it for certain tasks, 
For example, you can install multiple programs with just one command. The sixth thing I'd recommend is, before you install Linux, and even while you use Linux, have backups. Even if you're a Windows or Mac user, you should be making backups. Things can and do go wrong. It's not unique to Linux, that's just how computers are. Sometimes an update can break something, sometimes you can delete or mess something up because of human error, and sometimes you can lose data because of hardware failure. However, by keeping backups of important data, you significantly reduce the risk. Some distros like Linux Mint come with a tool called Timeshift. It can be used to back up your files, but it's more of a system restore tool. Also, keep a Linux Live USB on hand, because if you know what you did wrong, you can actually fix the problem within that live environment. Let's say you mess up your fstab file. And the final point is just about Linux gaming. Of course, not everyone plays video games, which is why I left this point until the very end. There's a misconception that you simply cannot play video games on Linux, but I've demonstrated on this channel that it just isn't the case. In fact, I've even pushed Linux gaming to its limits by running games on netbooks, cheap hardware, and even on ARM devices. So the fact that Linux can't game at all just isn't true. Now, it's true that not all games run on Linux. However, a lot of popular games are natively supported. And because of tools like Valve Proton, Lutris, and the Heroic Games Launcher, a lot of Windows-only games run on Linux about as well as they run on Windows. The main limitation with Linux gaming is with anti-cheat software. Games like Valorant and Fortnite, for instance, just will not work. However, things have gotten better, and I've gotten games like Dead by Daylight and Apex Legends to run on Linux. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this advice was useful to you. And until next time, cheerio.